We're aboard a beautiful Outremer 52. This is Awen, and behind us, Can. We're here for the Can Yachting Festival. We've got an action-packed video for you this week. We start in Iceland, and then we end in the French Riviera. We're going sailing on a Neil 47. Hey, we're going compact this time. We're traveling light, only 300 pounds. One, two, three, four, ah, uh, yeah. First, we need to get a little coffee. A little, little more coffee. <laughs> wonder how the Look coffee is. Look at this, is a baby here. coffee. <laughs> they don't know that we got needs. Daddy has needs. Uh uh. Daddy needs coffee. We don't have to go through any gates. I mean, hopefully, this is safe. Look, it's Rand Sailing. <laughs> <laughs> they got a YouTube channel. <laughs> it's cold. It's like, <laughs> I think local time is like. What, 6.30 in the morning? Yeah. We're, we're still on West Coast time, so it's midnight for us. We're in Iceland. What the heck are we doing in Iceland? Well, we're doing a quick stopover on our way to Nice. Uh, originally, we were just gonna spend, what, a few hours here? Yeah, and we decided, hey, you know, we've always wanted to come to Iceland. Let's check it out for at least one night. You've always wanted to come to always. Iceland? Always, yeah. I have, ever since the Walter Mitty show. <laughs> what was that? The Adventures of... Oh, Arden. that's a great movie. Yes. That movie sold me on Iceland. We got some fun things planned for the day, and then I I imagine we're gonna crash out pretty early today. <laughs> get some sleep for tomorrow's flight. Yes, so hope you enjoy Iceland. Let's check it out. All right, we already took a wrong turn. We went to a hotel. It's $1,800 a night. That's next to a power plant that smells like rotten eggs. 1,800 bucks a night. And it's all booked up. <laughs> Yeah, so apparently the Blue Lagoon is... Ooh, that's blue. Oh. That's blue puddles. Yeah, the silica. That's why it's blue. This better be worth it. We flew... We flew over the North Pole to get here. And all I see is a bunch of rocks so far. So I'm not impressed at all. There's only like five people here, it's so... It's like seven in the morning. <laughs> it's a 2,000 year old lava field. We're walking around the blue lagoon before we decide to go in. Looks like a giant cephalopod slurp here. Is it heavy? What are your impressions of Iceland? Nobody lives here. They just don't. Everywhere we went, there's nobody. Except for one spot, Reykjavik. Is it Reykjavik? I 
Can you tell me about this church? Yep, so uh, this is the uh, largest church here in Iceland, named after one of our most sacred poets, Hattgrimur uh, Pietrum. The church being named Hattgrimskirkja, or the Church of Hattgrimur. A 16th century poet wrote the Hymn to the Passion and has had a, a very profound impact in our uh, literary tradition and such. Thank you so much. Okay, we're gonna go check out the view. So Reykjavik is the largest city in Iceland and it has 60% of the Icelandic population. So I feel like I'm in a suburb of uh, America. I'd say 90% of the people either speak extremely good English or they're Americans just off the boat, or the plane, I should say. Reykjavik? Reykjavik. Reykjavik? It's a charming little place. And they got a very uh, interesting museum here. It's the Museum of unforgettable experience. <laughs> Sadly, the museum is closed, but we can get a taste, so to speak, <laughs> of the books on display down here. Uh, hundreds and hundreds of books, all preserved in formaldehyde. There's coffee. Plus, they've got coffee. Let's go in the morning. <laughs> oh, now that's a big Whoa. I wonder how this guy feels about having his picture next to the museum. <laughs> Thank you, Babel, for sponsoring this video. I've never spoken French in my life, and now I'm here in France. I need to speak the language. That's why I'm doing Babel. This Bien sûr. Bien sûr. Fantastique. Fantastique. <gasps> Fantastique. So it's a game? Je m'appelle Charlotte. Yeah. Can you tell me how Babel works? You pick a language and you tell it what level you're at. So if you're a beginner, if you're intermediate, you can say, I want to learn every day. And it has a lesson and you spell things, you say things, you correlate it, you build the sentence. So it's it's firing on all the different cylinders. Je m'appelle Nick. Enchanté. I didn't realize you get two free live classes with your subscription. I also like things where you can get your money back if you try it out and you're not into it. So there's a 20 day money back guarantee. And if you guys would like to try Babbel, they're giving you 60% off your subscription. So just click on the link below in the description. Nous avons beaucoup de problèmes avec trouver un bateau à voile. C'est très bien, oui, beaucoup de problèmes. Regarde, il y a plein de bateaux autour de nous. Peut-être qu'on peut aller faire knock knock. This is like the yellow brick road, <laughs> kind of. They do have sailboats. Man, they do not mess around when it comes to tugboats. That is a serious tugboat. hours to kill before the airport. I'm really glad we came out to this lighthouse. It's low tide. And it's gorgeous. It's like here in Iceland. It's kind of like being on the moon. It's really stark and beautiful and vast. It's very, uh, very clean. It's low tide and it's gorgeous. Really calm weather today. No wind, the sea is flat, and it smells like the ocean. I'm so glad we came out here, aren't you? I feel like we're on the most, uh, I feel like we're at the calmest day ever I here. Know. Like this is normally just like this, I don't know. know, just this churning, violent <laughs> ocean. It's just today, it's like a lake. So true. Can you imagine just the waves coming up here and just yeah. clapping this thing? I mean, they have they have two lighthouses within like a couple hundred meters. I mean, swing around. 
This is the other side. There's another lighthouse. Is that like their backup lighthouse when the <laughs> storms get too bad out here? I kind of want to come back when it's all stormy now. Don't you? I don't know. <laughs> it's like that begs the question. Do you think you'd ever want to come back to Iceland? I do want to come back. Do you think you'll ever come back to Iceland? I do think I'll come back. And uh, I'm going to rent a camper and drive all the way around it. Go out and see the puffins. I'm going to do it up next time. Will I ever come back here? Uh, I mean, I guess I'd like to. I'd have to save up for a few years because I think it's about 700 bucks a day to, to travel around here at least. No joke. I think that's what we spent one day. <laughs> All right. I just want to show you where we're staying here in Reykjavik. It's a very humble <laughs> little dorm room. Nick, I feel like this is what it'd be like if we were college roommates. <laughs> <laughs> we were college roommates. Yeah, I feel like we're in either a dorm or a prison. <laughs> Little garden view. Yeah, very fancy. <laughs> Looking at the, out at the airport, practically. No, I slept good. Did you, Nick? It's getting packed up, getting ready for France. Just got in, it's about 11.30, and there's a healthy fast food right by our hotel. And we're starving. Thank you. Thank you. Bon appetit. Mm, that looks so good. I'm ready to go get some coffee. Get those for me. So tell us where we are. We're in Nice, France, the uh, epicenter of floral arrangements and it's old town. Old town. Big day today. What's happening? We're gonna meet up with our friends and head off for a charter on a Neil 47 with one little pit stop en route. A boat for sale. Goodbye, niece. It's time to go. How's my Sherpa? Tenzing Nordnik. I'm ready to rock and roll. All right, tell us what's happening. Oh, we're just leaving the Hotel Soko mm -hmm. here in beautiful Nice, France. I guess I can look at the Yeah, look in the mirror. And we started the day with a lovely walk 
to get some pastry and coffee. And now we're going to drive to Coquelin, which will take about two hours. Saint-Tropez. Saint-Tropez. We're going to see a boat. Rez-de-chaussée. Oui. Ouverture des portes. Hi, au revoir. Thank you. Spandana and Dave are going to pick us up here at the train station. Our friends have rented a Neil 47. We're going to go charter with them for a week. But just by chance, there's a catamaran that's at least worth looking at. Yeah, the search has uh, turned up quite a few duds over the last 15 months so we've kind of let it go for now and just we're gonna focus on having fun in Europe so maybe that relaxed attitude will turn up a boat you never know you never know all right we so really tired. screwed this one up yeah we took a four hour nap yesterday yeah. woke up at 4 30 this morning we're delirious how's my jet lag <laughs> I do know I'm in Europe. Okay, it's Sunday mm -hmm. and we are getting ready to shove off the dock for our week-long charter on this Neil 47. We got all moved in last night and got provisioned up. And now we're just checking the final things with our propane, got a refill, getting our plan together for dock lines and for getting out of this very tight spot. Let's get this show on the road. <laughs> oh my God, it's so pretty. And we're sailing the Mediterranean. I know. <laughs> Look at this weather. We're gonna have like 80s all week. I think it's not that crowded this time of year. No, the rush is over here in Saint-Tropez. <laughs> did I say it right? The downtown area, not as fancy as I would have thought, but I did see a lot of guys in white pants. You saw white pants and white shirt men? Yeah. <laughs> From the Navy? <laughs> no, from the cool school. We're gonna head out, do a little day sailing, and uh, I'm not sure where we're headed. We're passengers on this trip. How fast are we going? How many knots of wind? 16. Wow. Well, we're really, really today. Yeah. We got 16 knots of wind, and we're doing about 6'2". Taking it easy. Overall, it was really mellow conditions and we really would have benefited from some light air sails like a Code Zero or an asymmetrical spinnaker. But this is a charter boat and they just don't supply sails like that. If you'd like a more in-depth review of the Neil 47, check out the link below. I'm coming down to Megan's cabin. Yes, yeah, she's got her own cabin. Why is that, Megan? You know, I just had it with you, Nick. I need some space. <laughs> We're in opposite sides of the boat. I have the other Alma. Megan has this one because she's she hates me. <laughs> uh, no, these cabins are quite small, so it's more like a single berth in here. And I've quite enjoyed having my own space, my own bathroom, my own bed. And, uh, you call I, this a bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> this is your own bathroom. But I have missed you. I guess it's a bathroom with a view. It's so different being a guest because we're not in charge. <laughs> it's kind of great. Honestly, but it's weird because we're so used to making all the decisions, doing all the anchoring, mooring, all that. And uh, we are definitely uh, happy to sit back and let these guys do their charter just exactly how they want to do it. So, so yeah, it's interesting, different experience. Nick and Andy Garcia just hanging out. <laughs> Talking about our next script. Yeah, what's it gonna be about? A sailing theme, I hope. Oh, definitely a pirate thing. 
Yeah, we're yeah. just gonna take a boat and keep adding hulls to it and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> like a big raft up for Waterworld type? Is that where we're headed? Absolutely. We're Waterworld, all right. If three hulls are good, who knows where we should stop? Quad, <laughs> quadrimaran. We're, we're designing a quadrimaran. Oh my God, I knew the it. ultimate stability. <laughs> It's wider than the It's just a big circle of balls, basically. You guys get lots of uh, ads for lawyers and yeah. you know, <laughs> Actually, divorce on FR has the most smiling people I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> she gets a divorce. She's sad before she gets a divorce. She meets another woman. She's happy. Hilarious. Wait, she meets another woman? Yeah. <laughs> Need like one up like this and one down like that rubbing the belly. <laughs> Oh God, Nick. Oh, perfect. You wanna get a, a Neo 47? Come to your office? I love coffee. We need to have a shirt that says I love coffee. I don't think I need a pillow right here. I know, they don't have it. Exposures. Mm. So you can like tap on the screen and then slide this little sunshine thing up and down. Have you oh, seen that? No, I <laughs> this is like all the best cured meats you could even imagine. And you got that at the boulangerie? I got this at the boulangerie. <laughs> and you want to eat like this every day? I love it. I mean, it's probably not good for you. But... <laughs> I don't care. Nice and moldy on the outside. That's what you want with your <laughs> gourmet meats. Is that what that white stuff Mold? is? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think it was? <laughs> like it has a, your daily vitamins and minerals. <laughs> oh, that's right, doctor. What, what will the mold be doing for us? <laughs> Wonderful things. Yes. Wonderful things. <clears throat> this is the Parc du Crocodile. I apologize for my French. Um, it is, there's a national park behind us, and this is a crocodile beach. Because of quite, the crocodiles. Because of all the southern French crocodiles <laughs> that are best friends with the orcas. Uh, <laughs> are there really crocodiles? I don't know. There's no crocodiles. <laughs> <laughs> crocodiles in the Mediterranean? <laughs> Let's start a rumor, shall we? I like the hat that's on the anchor. Your anchor has a little... Just had a quick call with Holly and Stefan on Awin, and they're over in Corsica. So we're trying to plan a meetup so we can go sail with them on their new Uchimera 52. All right, doctor, how never, is it? Uh, never a dull moment on the high sea. <laughs> a little boating drama. This just uh, verifies what I've always said, the windlasses. I was trying to eat things, they're very hungry. <laughs> All the same size. It's yep. a hungry hippo. So that's got that metal thing you gotta go through. Yeah? There we go. Got it. Alright. Okay. Put us back yeah, together. That's fast. Good job. Yeah. Good job, team. Good job. So this is spun. So we'll troubleshooting on the high seas. <laughs> Both work in beautiful places. At least the weather's calm, cooperating with us. Thank you, weather. So why are you out here on a motorhome? Betrayal, according to all of our friends. <laughs> all of our motorhome friends are like, what are you doing they're, out there? They're so angry. You told them? I told them. <laughs> you gotta and keep we, that quiet. Just go buy the boat and then you tell them later. <laughs> why the triplet and not the catamaran? That is an excellent question. I mean, have you met catamaran owners? <laughs> they're so snobby. They're so the worst. <laughs> uh, we stepped on an anneal um, back in Charleston when we were there for a little bit and really liked it and decided, you know what? We, we saw that they had charters and decided that we have to do multi-hulls eventually. We're going to want to explore trimarans and catamarans. So let's start with the trimaran. Yeah. We definitely hope to get on more catamarans before we make the decision. Because, yeah, it's great. Like Dave said, it's great to look for something before you're desperately in need of something. So oh, just... desperately in need of something? I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the motivation? Just wanted, just curiosity? You see the videos and you're like, what's this all about? Or 
I think a big part of it was uh, sailing on a mono hull. Um, you know, you have a lot of the ocean movement, you have the regular boat stuff, but then you also have heel, which we had a trip uh, recently, a couple of months ago, we were trying to go from Dominican Republic to Curacao, and it was just, we were on our ear the entire time getting rocked by the ocean waves, and uh, we were like, you know, Rock by the ocean, we have only you can avoid, but maybe getting uh, on our ear the entire time, maybe something we can avoid. And also just having more living space. Yeah. We're both kind of trying to work from the boat and live on the boat. Yeah. And well, why don't you just do the normal thing, which is don't even go try one out, just go buy. Just go buy. <laughs> a catamaran. The first one that you find, in fact. Why not just do that? Well, we practically did that with the monohull. We, we learned how to sail. <laughs> Two months later, we owned a 40-foot sailboat. And while that was adventurous, we don't think that that's maybe the best way to do it. And now that we have the experience of cruising, now we know what to look for and what we want. So you, you rented this one. Uh, give me your reflections on the renting the boat. And uh, then... Tell me what you think about the boat. It's a first time chartering, so we're not sure what the normal is. The actual company itself was relatively straightforward. I think if it was not in France, which is where we did it, it would have been more straightforward. It's just the language barrier is really tough sometimes. The, then once they actually got onto the boat, the toilets don't quite work. They do flush, but you have to kind of pour your own water. Um, there's a couple of things that are broken. The water maker didn't quite work, and we had to fiddle with it, fiddle with, fiddle with it to fiddle get it working. It. So yeah. They had a fiddler on board, thank God. <laughs> thank God, indeed. Thank yeah. God, Nick is we here to help us We did not invite that. them to help us with as much as they have, but they have been I mean, mostly we've been doing this. But, <laughs> but every once in a while, I, I did, um, I did, uh, I got, I brought you some bread. No, actually, no, I didn't even bring you some bread. No, I haven't done much around here. <laughs> We've, we've done a lot of bread shopping. He's only that. taught us how to use this type of mainsail. We only have a uh, furling main, so he's only done that. He's only helped us rescue our uh, snubber. And just FYI, she's over there planning the entirety of the rest of their next few days. <laughs> I so. really haven't done anything. I did. No, uh, we've, been, we've been passengers. Yeah. No. Uh, it's been wonderful. We're so grateful to you guys for inviting us. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you guys for coming. Yeah. Both. Pretty good shape, right? Uh, otherwise, good. right? Yeah, yeah. I think so. I think because we've never chartered before, we've sort of rolled with the punches. Like, and I think we as sailors understand that boats break all the time and stuff happens, and we've just kind of rolled with it. So, I think if we were newer to sailing, this all of this stuff would have bothered us a lot more. This so, is normal stuff. This yeah. is just normal stuff. I mean, when they said the toilets were only half working, I was like, oh, okay, yeah. I guess it's a charter. <laughs> this is what happens, right? Yeah. <laughs> At least I don't have to fix them. Right. <laughs> not, not, not my boat. <laughs> yeah, not my boat. Boat of the week, not my boat. All right, well, let's shift gears to, uh, so what do you think about the Neil features you like, features you hate, what you think of sailing it, all that stuff. You can do like, I can do hate. Uh, like was definitely, and this is tough for us because it's our first real long experience in a multi-hull, but just the amount of space that we have, and I think the Neil is special for this, was just the amount of living space, the amount of walking around, and just the sun was hitting us from different angles and I could just go anywhere else and find a seat. That was awesome. Um, kitchen, the galley is huge. Um, just really enjoyed living on the boat, which I think is something we're definitely looking for with multi-hulls. Uh, but it's hard for us to say, is that Neil or is that multi-hull multi necessarily? Uh, so I think we do need more experience with that. Sailing it, it was actually really good. I feel like uh, the lines all came to one place as opposed to our boat. So it was nice having that central control panel. Um, and there, everything here is way bigger than we're used to. And having electric winches, very nice. <laughs> Way better than hand cranking that we have to do all the time. Yeah. With the size of this mainsail, yeah. really happy we have one. Um, just things, not so much we hate, but things that kind of aren't our favorites. Um, our boat, especially, and this is again a multi hull, maybe a mono hull, multi hull thing, but our boat doesn't sail on anchor as much, which is what I mean by that is just kind of moving around while it's anchored or moored. Um, our tends to be a little bit more steady so getting used to that has been a little bit yeah. um i hate the toilet that's up here um it's too damn tiny i don't know who fits in there uh, it's <laughs> very skinny people um standing up from that toilet is a challenge like yeah. I'm, i am reaching in all directions <laughs> yeah. to get up there. it's definitely a low point for me um 
but very very small nitpicky stuff I think in general we've we've really enjoyed our time it has been an incredibly great introduction to multi hulls and an introduction to a trimaran which for us the whole point is to try as many things as possible our brain is blank in what we want and we're just now filling it with this, well, this checks these and this checks that, so. Different possibilities. Different possibilities. Oh, they are good. They're pros. Do you guys have a YouTube channel? Yeah, <laughs> you guys have a YouTube channel? Yeah, yeah, T give us a plug. What's the YouTube channel? Yes, uh, uh, the name of our YouTube channel is For Sun and Stars, as in we travel for the sun and the stars. So, Candy's over there, maybe a nautical mile of flight. Oh, is here, there's a mowing field. Nick, we gotta go. We gotta get to the Cannes International Boat Festival. Yachting. <laughs> That's right, yachting. Sorry, we ran out of time to give you the full tour of the Uchimera 52 this week, but stay tuned and we'll have it for you next week. Thanks always to our patrons and the new patrons. Thank you so much for signing up.